for parachutes to really come of age, it takes conflict to break out in Europe. World War I. Aerial warfare adds a new dimension to the battlefield. Supremacy of the skies is key for both sides, and highly trained pilots are a scarce resource. Yet they're dying in their thousands. October 1918, the year after America joins the war, the U.S. Air Service assembles a crack team to take on the challenge. They're led by James Floyd Smith, an engineer. Smith analyzes parachutes that have been saving lives in the war since 1916. Tethered above the front line, balloon observers can spot enemy positions, but they're vulnerable to attack so the observers are given parachutes. They work well from a stable balloon, but when a pilot has to jump from a plane that's out of control, their chute can get trapped. Smith thinks he's found a way to avoid parachutes getting tangled up with a spinning plane. By jumping free of the aircraft before releasing the parachute by hand, Smith's radical idea requires being in free fall for a few seconds. But at the time, most people are scared that free fall is deadly. So Smith designs a manually operated parachute. After getting away from a damaged plane, the airman pulls a ripcord. That launches a small pilot parachute out the back, which catches the air and pulls out the main chute. It's a revolutionary design. On April 28, 1919, James Floyd Smith flies Leslie Irvin to 1,500 feet. Irvin takes a deep breath and jumps. and the parachute opened just as planned. Irvin, Smith, and the team have proved that being in free fall is safe, and that unlike a static line parachute, their new design would allow pilots to jump clear of a damaged plane. <laughs> 